Sup, y'all, and welcome to Cultural Patterns and Processes, Part 1. In this video, we're going to look at this key question at what are local and popular cultures. We'll look into perceiving culture, and to begin, let's define folk culture, which is usually relatively small in area, as well as small with respect to the number of people. It is naturally rural and incorporates a cohesive and homogeneous population, processing similar and often unique cultural traits. For instance, modern country music, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, had its roots in the more humble back roads along the Appalachian Mountains in Tennessee and Kentucky. By contrast, popular culture is larger, usually urban, incorporates heterogeneous populations, and is quickly changing. In fact, the pace of change has seemingly only increased as technologies such as social media connect more people of greater diversity. Companies and individuals can actually create popular culture, and this can be extremely lucrative. Do you recognize this man? Even though he has not played a professional basketball game since 2003, Michael Jordan is still one of the most recognizable names not only in sports, but in all of popular culture. This is in no small part due to his iconic shoes, the famous Air Jordans, produced by Nike, debuting in 1984. They have been among the best-selling sneakers every year since. The big three sports in the United States are basketball, football, and baseball. And these teams, along with the industries associated with them, generate enormous fan bases while reining in billions of dollars a year. Now, do you recognize this man? He is none other than Tony Hawk, the Birdman, arguably the most successful skateboarder in history. While the big three sports are still the kings of the U.S. sports industry, they increasingly face competition from the video game industry, of which Tony Hawk has been very successful, the X Games, highlighting alternative sports like skateboarding, UFC or the Ultimate Fighting Championship, as well as the most ubiquitous of world sports, football or soccer. And just maybe you recognize another cultural reference in this image. To investigate further, we look at a concept related to folk culture, but is defined as local culture, which is typically small, where the people see themselves as a community, and they seek to preserve their traits and customs. Unlike folk culture, which is defined as rural in nature, local cultures may be rural, urban, or even suburban. Now, in any cultural group, there is the material culture, which consists of tangible things, art, houses, clothing, sports, food, etc. These constitute a culture's artifacts. Whereas the non-material culture include intangible things, such as beliefs, practices, values, and aesthetics, which relates to what local cultures consider attractive or fashionable. These constitute a culture's mentifacts. In contrast to local cultures, globalization is the expansion of economic, political, and cultural processes to a global scale. What you see here is an aborigine in Australia playing a didgeridoo. This image is notable because you can see how an artifact from a local culture has become an iconic instrument recognized at a global scale. So, in an age of globalization, where popular culture diffuses quickly, what do local cultures do to maintain their customs and avoid assimilation? To fully answer this question, we must first define assimilation, which is the process where people lose their original cultural traits when in contact with people of a different society. From around 1790 and even into the early 1900s, the U.S. government had an official policy of assimilation. Indigenous people were instructed on how to be Americans through education in schools, churches, and government agencies. Indians who assimilated more successfully were often rewarded with better jobs and citizenship. However, today, many American Indians have worked hard to revive the old customs of their local cultures. So, to understand how local cultures are sustained, they essentially have two general goals. One is to keep other cultures out, and they can achieve this by fervently teaching the young about their cultural heritage, their history, and repeatedly emphasize their unique cultural traits and complexes. Another way local cultures sustain themselves is to keep their own culture in, so as to not water down their values or principles. They will sometimes seek to avoid cultural appropriation, which is the process where other cultures adopt customs, knowledge, and icons to use for their own benefit. 
An example of this can be seen with the recent controversy surrounding several Native American groups petitioning for the Washington Redskins NFL team to change their mascot to something they consider less offensive. This is in contrast to a seemingly similar situation with the Seminole Tribe of Florida and the eponymous mascot of Florida State University. The Seminole Tribe and university leaders have forged a mutual partnership in which the Seminoles are portrayed honorably and with respect, such as the depiction of Chief Osceola before each home football game. And the Seminoles, in turn, receive monetary benefits as well. Often, people in rural areas can maintain their local cultures more easily than in urban areas. One of the Anabaptist groups in the U.S., the Amish, were originally Protestants from Germany and Switzerland. They tend to stand out because of their plain clothes, their pacifistic ways, and especially because they shun electricity due to their interpretation of certain verses from the Bible. Amish communities are concentrated in states like Pennsylvania, Ohio, Iowa, and Indiana, among others. Another Anabaptist group that has some similarities, yet some stark differences from the Amish, are the Hutterites, who typically live in communal colonies of around 100 people and are concentrated in Minnesota, the Dakotas, Montana, and the Canadian provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Unlike the Amish, they do accept technologies that help them farm, although they do attempt to refrain from technology that might disrupt their way of life. Local cultures are surrounded by the larger and more imposing popular cultures around them, so they often engage in neolocalism by seeking out their regional culture and reinvigorating it in response to the uncertainty of the changing modern world. Many local cultures exist in urban settings within tightly knit ethnic neighborhoods, or what are sometimes referred to as ethnic islands. El Barrio, which means neighborhood, in Spanish Harlem, New York City, is a great example where Puerto Ricans have adjusted their cultural landscape with flags, signs written in Spanish, and authentic shops and restaurants. Another example is around Cai Ocho, or 8th Street, in what's vernacularly known as Little Havana in Miami, where Cubans have long since migrated after Fidel Castro took power in Cuba back in the 1950s. Because local cultures stand out from the popular culture around it, some of their cultural traits can be commodified, in which a good or service that was not previously regarded as a commodity is then bought or sold for profit. For instance, 200 years ago, witnessing Amish people going about their daily work would not be very different from most others around them. But today, tourists can pay money to see just that. And while partnerships can be made to benefit both parties, many local cultures resist commodification. As was the case with Lakota Indians suing a brewery that used the name Crazy Horse, perhaps their most famous leader from the past. When cultures are commodified, the question of authenticity arises in which a stereotypical image or experience conveys an otherwise dynamic and complex local culture. Traveling to the World Showcase in the Disney theme park Epcot, you can experience more than a dozen world cultures. While much of the experience may be fairly authentic, in which most of the actors hail from the respective countries they represent, it still shows only parts of these cultural landscapes, and often in an idyllic, if not somewhat inaccurate, manner. That is correct.